Hey, I'm Janelle and I'm so glad you're here. I don't know about you, but on days when I'm feeling very tired, but I still really want to weave, I end up wasting so much time just trying to decide what I should weave. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make some super easy, super simple woven coasters. Let's get started. The tools and materials that you're going to need for this project are two different colors of single ply two millimeter cotton string, eight, eight cotton warp string, Burnett Handicrafter cotton in the off-white color, a pair of scissors. I'm using our spruce and linen mini loom with the comb that comes with it, as well as one of our walnut tapestry needles. This loom is a four ends per inch loom and we are going to be double warping it. One thing I'm gonna do a little bit differently is I'm going to go after I've gone up and down once, I'm gonna go back in this first notch here because we wanna have 32 total warp strings and that's how we're gonna to have to get it. From there, we're just putting two warp strings in each notch. Thirty-two. From there, I can just simply cut off a tail and then tie a knot around that last string. The next thing I'm going to do is just use some painter's tape to actually tape my loom down to the table. This just makes it so it doesn't shift around. It's so much more comfortable and especially on these really little looms where you can't easily prop it up on something. It just makes your life a whole lot easier. Then we're going to take the Burnett Handicrafter cotton and we're going to take about five widths of our warp for the length of the string. And I always like to add a little bit of extra because the worst is when you just don't have quite enough yarn. Next, I'm going to start with a row of twining. If you need a tutorial for twining, you can click the link right here or the link in the description box below. After that row of twining, I'm just gonna straighten it out with my little weaving comb. And I have my twining about an inch and a half up from the bottom of the loom. Then we're going to do three rows of plain weave, again, just with that Burnett Handicrafter cotton. Since I ended this last row of plain weave going under the far warp string, I'm just gonna loop it back around. It just makes for a tidier finish later. Next, I'm going to grab what's going to be my prominent color for the coaster, which is this off-white color, and I'm going to be weaving 17 rows, so I'm just going to make sure that I have enough to do that. And then, of course, taking a little bit of extra just to be safe. These coasters are really quick to weave up because we're actually not going to be doing plain weave over one, under one, but we're going to do plain weave going over two, under two, and that's going to be the whole way up until we get back to the other end and repeat this. So I'm just again going to go over two, under two, all the way across. The other thing that's really great about weaving something like coasters is that it allows you to really work on getting your edges straight in a more controlled way. It's such a small project, so it's easier to focus on that when you're not trying to focus on following a pattern. Because again, this is just modified plain weave going over to under two. And I am going to be beating down really firmly with my weaving comb because we want this to be nice and tight so that it makes for a a stiffer kind of cloth, which I feel like is a little bit better for something like a mug rug. Making sure that we're doing all the best practices for weaving, we're creating that arch, strumming our warp, and then beating down that weft nice and firmly. And I can see here, I actually missed a string right on the edge. I went under one over one, and this should be going under. So I'm gonna quickly correct that and then continue on with that plain weave. And again, focusing on the edges, I can tell that this edge seems a little bit loose. So I'm just gonna try that again. I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter. and see if that looks a little bit better. Looks pretty good. Let's 
So you can almost see here that this loop is going further out than the previous one. So that's kind of when I know that I need to try that edge again. I actually ended up weaving 19 strings instead of just the 17 that I said earlier because it wasn't quite as long as I wanted it to be, so I just wove in a couple extra strings. Because I ended on the under, once again, I'm gonna loop this back around just for a cleaner edge and easier tucking in later and cut off some of the excess. Next, I'm going to take my kind of mustard yellow string and I'm going to be weaving nine strands of this so I'm gonna measure that out. In order to not have like a lot of ends to tuck in in one section, I'm going to start on the right side. We will be starting on an under because the last row was going over. But all I'm gonna do for that is, once again, just loop that around an extra time just on the edge there so that again, it's kind of like letting that string go behind, which is gonna make it nicer to tuck in later. And we can weave in nine rows of this yellow. Now that we're done the yellow, we're gonna go back to the off white and we're gonna do the same thing we did here. So we're going with that 19 rows of plain weave. And again, to try to keep some of the ends apart from each other, I'm gonna start on the right hand side again. Okay, you guys, <laughs> I messed up my plain weave again here. So you can see I had gone over these two. Then I went under one and then over three. So again, I don't want to have that disruption in my piece. So I'm just simply unweaving. And there's, as I always say, there's no shame in the unweaving game. It's totally fine, happens to me all the time. So definitely take the time to do it properly. So we've ended on the under at the top here and I'm just gonna loop that back around again. Something to double check for is that this stripe and this one are actually the same length and you weren't beating down harder or looser on one side than the other. So to end this off, we're gonna end it the same way we started it. We're gonna go with three rows of plain weave and then one row of twining with the Burnett Handicrafter cotton. My string was getting a little bit short for my long tapestry needle, so I just grabbed one of these little plastic yarn needles to finish off the twining. Now something I like to do at the end here to lock in that twining a little bit better is this first string that was going under the warp string, I'm gonna, like I did before, wrap it around this warp string here, but I'm gonna go underneath this string sticking out this way. Um, this just kind of helps finish off the twining stitch a little bit better so that everything's locked into place. You can use your yarn needle if needed. Now we're ready to finish off the back. So I'm going to flip my loom over and we're gonna bring all of those ends from the front to the back just so we don't miss any. Tucking in the ends for this piece is super easy. So I'm just gonna take my yarn needle here and I'm gonna go through three of the wefts in the back. And then I'm gonna take that end, thread it through my needle. Try to get all the little strings through it. There we go. And then just pull it through. Not pulling it too tight and then just trimming off the excess. To finish this off, we're gonna use the trick I also taught in the woven bookmark tutorial. And what that is, is I'm grabbing just a marker. This one is water soluble, but you can definitely just use a Sharpie as well. And we're gonna mark off where we wanna cut this before we cut it. So that kind of makes sure that we're going to get that nice and straight. I'm gonna leave my little mug rug tassels. Um, I think I'm gonna go with about three quarters of an inch long. So I'm just gonna make a mark at three quarters of an inch there. 
and another one here. And then I can just put my ruler across those two points and make a connecting line. So this will give me something nice and straight to cut along and then do the same thing on the other side. And now what's nice about that is we can cut very confidently so that we're not having to kind of fix it up after it's off the loom. So I'm just gonna cut just inside of that mark and we can just do a few strings at a time. And then on this side, I'm gonna leave it on the loom and then just cut along that line again. If you used a warp string similar to the one I use and it's applied warp string, you can then take like a little rope brush or a cat brush or a comb and you can just sort of comb out those warp strings so that they kind of unravel. And this kind of just gives us a fuller looking tassel. And it kind of gives us that true like mug rug look on the ends. That has created quite a bit of fuzz on the very end. So all I'm gonna do there is just go ahead and like trim off that little bit of fuzz that we created. Get out of here, fuzz. Watch this video next for a slightly more complex coaster tutorial.